continuing my detailed discussion on the recent review paper, which just came out. Um, basically, it's a review article called Earth's Ice Imbalance. So um, I'm in the middle of discussing it. So if you're watching this video and you haven't watched the previous one, uh, please, uh, the previous couple, then please, please do so. So, so basically, um, you know, the ice, so the, um, the, the, the ice losses around the globe are tracking the upper range of the climate warming scenarios forecast by the ice intergovernmental panel on climate change. So the RCP 8.5 scenario, or it's even worse than that. And there's huge ice loss. Um, so the numbers are going to, uh, you know, the numbers of sea level, the number for sea level rise is going to be large, but the numbers they give is still very conservative. The IPCC is very conservative. And I've talked about how, you know, why I think, I mean, James Hansen was talking about five meters by 2100, but if you look at all the numbers recently, um, it's quite possible we could have seven meters by 2070. The feedbacks that occur when we lose Arctic sea ice and have a blue ocean event are not considered in any of the, these numbers. Um, the ice sheet mass balance is the net balance between the mass loss associated with ice flow, ice melting at the ice ocean interface, subglacial melt. So if the glaciers are grounded on bedrock below sea level, the warming ocean uh, melts the glaciers from below the surface of the water and the surface mass balance. So the surface mass balance is the net difference between precipitation, right? Add snow, which turns into ice, fern and ice. Uh, sublimation is, the, is a phase change from solid ice at the surface to um, water vapor uh, without going into, without melting. Okay, that's that process. The water, the meltwater, the ice can melt on the surface of Greenland, for example, you get meltwater ponds and then the water can evaporate. Uh, wind erosion can blow, uh, you know, you think of Antarctica, very high elevation, very cold air at the top. You get these catabatic winds, which roll down the slopes in Iceland and can carry huge amounts of, of snow actually and blow it off the continent into the ocean. So this is wind erosion and also, of course, meltwater runoff. Ice shelves are a major source of ocean fresh water. They um, impart resistive forces on grounded ice upstream. So they buttress the glaciers. They slow to, you know, the glaciers flow and the, the, the speed of the glaciers flowing can be reduced greatly by uh, if the ice is grounded upstream. So, you know, on bedrock near the coastlines, but when the ice shelves go, that buttressing is removed, like taking a cork out of a wine bottle, and you can get a huge uh, discharge of ice calving into the ocean. Um, okay, so all of these things are going on. There's over 300 documented ice shelves on the planet, most are around Antarctica, um, and they have a huge, amount, huge volume of ice, and fluctuations in this volume can occur as a result of changes in their extent and their thickness. In the Arctic, the ice shelves are much smaller and more sparsely distributed, but the ones in the northern coast of Ellesmere Island and the Russian Arctic Islands, they've collapsed in recent decades. Okay, just last year in 2020, huge collapse in Ellesmere Island, which a lot of people in the, a number of people in the geography department at U of O um, had equipment up there that they lost, and it's just lucky that they weren't up there um, when the collapse occurred, because that would have been a very dangerous uh, situation. Of course, mountain glaciers, um, you know, uh, have a huge moderating effect um, on global sea level and regional hydrology. They affect local communities who rely on the meltwater as a source of fresh water, and it feeds the rivers. There's over 215,000 glaciers worldwide containing 160,000 cubic kilometers of ice. Their retreat has accounted for about 20%, 21% of global sea level rise between 1993 and 2017. Uh, sea ice, typically there's 15 to 25 million square kilometers of, of the global ocean surface is covered by sea ice at any time of the year. Of course, as the sea ice decreases in the Arctic, because the Arctic is in summer, 
it increases in Antarctica, and that tends to try to balance things out a bit, although the trends are generally down. All right, of course, the thickness and extent vary seasonally. Um, sea ice plays a key role in the fresh water and energy budgets of the polar regions, the ocean acidification levels. Um, it affects the marine ecosystems up there, regulates, of course, the absorption of solar radiation in summer. And it influences, it says, furthermore, sea ice could influence oceanic and atmospheric circulation, affect weather patterns in the mid latitudes. Well, it shouldn't say could there. Of course, it does. You know, more and more sea ice loss, warmer and warmer Arctic, lowers the temperature difference to the equator, slows down the jet streams, they became wavier and stuck in place, and this is quite well established now. And they refer to the, um, a couple papers here. I think I've talked about the, these in previous videos. Um, okay, so, you know, we use satellites. We can use... Uh, satellite altimeters to measure the distance from the satellite to the glacier and then monitor that over time to see the change in thickness of the glacier. Um, so we can actually study um, to great, to good detail and accuracy, thickness of the sea ice and um, the mass of the sea ice using, grab, uh, using things like uh, using, using uh, gravity like the GRACE satellites, the Gravity Anomaly satellites, two satellites traveling in tandem, the distance between them is measured accurately. Um, and as these tandem satellites cross over a large mass, like a glacier, they're pulled closer to the Earth, they're pulled closer together, and the, uh, the change of that distance separ in separation can be then calibrated to the amount of mass uh, over that particular glacier and then the change over time in subsequent orbits lets them see the mass loss. Okay, um, so this study doesn't include elements of the cryosphere that are not ice like snow on land and permafrost and also it doesn't, I said about 1% or less than 1% is from river and lake ice and that's not really included because there's not a lot of good data. Uh, snow cover, snow loss, of uh, quantity of snow on land is decreased. Look at this. This is, I have to laugh at this. It's de decreased by 49 plus or minus 49 gigatons per decade in the northern hemisphere since 1980. Okay, so 49 minus 49, so zero. This number would be between zero and 98. So the quantity of snow is decreased by zero, not decreased, or by 98 gigatons. Well, that's a huge difference. Surely we can come up with a better, you know, a, le a less uh, error, you know, less uncertainty here. Um, permafrost has warmed globally by 0.29 uh, degrees C in the past decade. Duration of river and lake ice covers shortened by 12 days per century in the Northern Hemisphere over the last 200 years and so on. I mean, the warming is doing incredible things. So we talk about mountain glaciers here and the losses, um, also the, um, so all the different components. But let me talk about the figures now because they're the most important. So this is the average rate of ice thickness change in the southern hemisphere and in the northern hemisphere. Um, you can see the sea ice extent. The purple is in the 90s, the uh, darker purple in the 2000s and the black in in 20, the 2010s. This is the thickness change in meters per year. So the red and really dark red, you know, minus 1.5 meters per year of thickness change. So lots of ice loss here um, around the coastal regions. And uh, in the Arctic, it's all along borders of, you know, the lower elevation regions, right? They're gonna be warmer, right? Because as you go up in altitude, it gets colder. So it's the, the fringes and it is also melting of the uh, the oceans warming it so the glaciers are are there's more calving and uh, the, the the ice shells are being lost so there's rapid uh, discharge of ice so those are the regions that are thinning the most here and there's also lots of thinning here the sea ice uh, loss you know is being much thinner and loss is up in these regions also so so uh, this is a good depiction of all of the the losses um, and, uh, you know, if we go to, this is the glaciers. This is the, so this is the cumulative mass change since 1961 in gigatons 
This is a thousand, you know, minus a thousand is this size. So huge losses in Alaska. This is Greenland. This is the uh, uh, Canadian North, Arctic Canada North. Okay, so there's plots here of the last decade um, or decade. Well, actually, it ends at about 2017. So about a seven year period. This is the Arctic Canada North. There is fluctuation year to year. This is a loss in gigatons per year or the derivative d change of mass with respect to time. Arctic Canada South, Iceland, okay, Russian Arctic, Southern Andes, Svalbard, High Mountain Asia, so selected regions. But generally you can see, um, you know, huge losses in Alaska, the Canadian North, Greenland, um, Svalbard, uh, Jan Mayan, um, the Russian Arctic, loss in the Himalayas, loss in the Southern Andes, in Antarctica. Okay, so this gives you a sort of an overview of where the ice is being lost spatially. Um, and um, this is the Antarctic uh, ice shelf. So this is ice shelves. So you can see the position here. Um, this, so the darker colors are the position in 1940, the lighter ones 2020. So you can see you know, all of this ice being lost here, you know, the collapses of Larsen A, B, C, and so on. Um, and this is the, the thickness of the ice shelf. So this is the, uh, the ice shelf that is extending over the oceans. Okay, and you can see that it can, you know, it's up to 250 meters thick. So it's this calving of this ice which creates a massive icebergs, uh, the titanic sinking icebergs, not these ones, these are in the southern hemisphere, but you can see 250 meters thick. I mean, this is huge thicknesses, and you can see how it's fluctuating. This is over the la 1940 to 2010, the data, and there is fluctuation because, you know, as there's more melting on the land, the, the, the uh, speed of the ice flow to the coast is greatly increased. That could thicken the ice shelf some years, and then when it calves off, it gets very thin you know, because the ice shelf recedes and it's, it's uh, thick, it's thinner, um, you know, so that could actually, as the thinner stuff breaks off here, it could actually cause a, th a thickening of what's left, right? Um, so that's there, that's important data. Now this is, this is a key figure. So this is global ice mass change. Um, it's in a table here, okay? for the different decades and the different components, Arctic sea ice loss, Antarctic sea ice loss, ice sheet calving, ice sheet thinning. So this is the total floating ice, right? The ice shelves are floating and that doesn't cause a rise in sea level. And then you have the grounded ice, the total grounded ice from Antarctica, Greenland and glaciers. And of course that causes a rise in sea level and then the total, okay? But this graph shows it just as nice, um, the trends, so we have this is from 95 to roughly, roughly present, well, 2017 or so, the latest uh, data, and it shows, we can see the floating ice, so Antarctic sea ice, um, you know, there was increases here and then decreases, okay, because of the change in the uh, southern annular winds uh, that pull the ice away from the continent. But it's also, you know, the warming oceans there is doing a number on the Antarctic sea ice now as well, so you can see that drop. Next is the um, uh, Arctic sea ice here, the loss over time, and then the ice sheet calving here and ice sheet thinning here. So this is all floating ice. So this ice loss, it's about half or so. It doesn't cause the sea level rise. And then we have the grounded ice in Antarctica and Greenland and the glaciers. Um, and uh, that causes sea level rise. So you can see sea level rise, there's no sea level rise from all of this, but there is a lot of sea level rise from these other components, okay? So you can see, um, you know, the it, so all of the details are in this paper. It's open source. I highly recommend that you have a look at it. And of course, uh, you know, the floating sea ice loss, it doesn't contribute to global sea level rise, but it does increase habitat loss increased coastal erosion, changes ocean circulation near the coastlines, and that affects mid-latitude weather and climate from the Arctic sea ice, okay? So it's, a, it's an excellent paper. And in terms of the energy, you can calculate the energy. M is the mass, L is the latent heat, T, T, delta T is the temperature rise, 
3.2% of the global imbalance of energy.